tomorrow night, a dramatic one-hour episode of Neighbours. Nothing's going to come between us. Nothing ever will anymore. Where from the homicide squad? Daphne! There's blood on your dress! Neighbours, 5.30 tomorrow on 7. I assume that you're in the entertainment business. <laughs> it's the biggest, the craziest, and the funniest yet. That is it's weird, wonderful, and highly unpredictable. Over 25 years of those fabulous television game shows in one hilarious one-hour special. This Saturday night at 6.30, for the first time on television, TV's funniest game show moments, number two on 7. Tuesday night, roll out the red carpet as Australia's king of comedy returns to seven with a whole world of hysteria. We have to share a toilet with the people in the next flat. We have it Sunday to Wednesday. One beer? Graham is joined by some of the funniest people in the world in this all-new special. People like Ronald Reagan and the Pope. Miss Jones, quickly, where's my pen? Uh, uh, behind your ear. Come, come, Miss Jones, I'm a busy man. Which ear? Graham Kennedy's World of Comedy, 8.30 Tuesday on 7. Since the very beginning, mankind has enjoyed the taste of natural yogurt, especially when it was mixed with exotic, succulent fruits and berries. Descendants tried to improve the formula with artificial ingredients, but couldn't. That's why Dairy Vale have gone back to the very beginning with Eve yogurt. Dairy Vale, Eve yogurt, nature's own gift to mankind. Elles sont très belles, vraiment très belles. Oui, très bien. Le spex. Le turf. Le spex. Because you've got a bit tough to make it in fashion. It's SSW's 30th birthday. Come and celebrate with SSW's $350,000 super grocery giveaway. Reveal the prize you're playing for, then scratch and spell SSW in the correct order. You win instantly. Collect these letters and spell Cambrook, then buy a terrific Cambrook appliance for only 99 cents. That's SSW's $350,000 super grocery giveaway. You get two big chances to win. Was it gave us trailer wings? Who takes us to our land of dreams? Oh, that's you, an Australian like you. And you become our flying kangaroo. The spirit of Australia shining through. Oh, that's you. The Japanese say perfection starts at the fingertips. Canon says perfection starts when you touch their computers for perfect control. Touch Canon typewriters for perfect results. Touch Canon cameras for perfect pictures. And touch Canon calculators for the perfect answers. Canon, the touch of perfection. Perfection. What's the most popular shape in cars today? Ferrari? Saab? Mazda? Holden? Daihatsu? Nissan? This one, Lance Dixon of Doncaster, the one with the biggest range of new cars in Melbourne. And right now, Lance is building his used car division, giving unbelievable trade-ins on new cars. And I'll give you two years of 40,000 kilometre warranty on all used cars. Lance Dixon, he'll see you right. Because I want to see you back next time. It's worse than going to the dentist. Tuesday night, you've got a date at the clinic. And it doesn't matter how many showers you take. Today. A controversial look. <laughs> at sensitive issues. Who's looking after you, kid? It's infectious. Oh, I'm sorry, that's Kamara. Highly contagious. I can't stand it! <laughs> Absolutely outrageous. Prostitutes, hoofters, lazy crabs. I enjoy it. Chris Hayward and Simon Burke in the television premiere. I never thought I'd end up in a place like this. The clinic, 9.30 Tuesday. Richard Gere, cool, alone, Valerie Kaprisky, sensual, afraid. Together, their passion will leave you breathless. The hottest television premiere of the year, 8.30 Wednesday, Breathless.
on Seven. First tonight, the rail strike, and talks are continuing in the Arbitration Commission in a bid to end the state's crippling rail dispute. Officials from the Australian Railways Union and the State Transport Authority resumed their talks at 9.30 this evening. However, if the union agrees to a return to work, it's unlikely trains will be back on the rails in time for the Melbourne Cup tomorrow. Any resolution to return to work will have to be put to a mass meeting of ARU members on Wednesday. The full bench of the Arbitration Commission today granted Australian workers a 3.8% wage rise. As Mark O'Brien reports, the increase is that sought by the ACTU, but employers say the effect on inflation will be disastrous. We have decided to award an increase of 3.8% on this occasion. Mr Justice Williams's statement gave Australia's 6 million workers an average pay increase of $15 a week. But after tax, the real rise will be about $8. The Commission added an extra $4.2 billion to the nation's annual wages bill, which will begin appearing in pay packets from today. The pay rise follows the economy showing encouraging signs of recovery, which includes production and sales being up, while unemployment is down. But there is concern about balance of payments deficits, which have led to a devaluation of the dollar by 20% since 1984. The ACTU and the Federal Government have agreed to go to the Commission together, asking for the 3.8% wage rise. Well, the ACTU welcomes the decision of the Commission. It is an important decision. It uh, does provide full compensation for wage and salary owners. Employers were outraged by the decision. The Confederation of Australian Industry says it's the first time in the history of the Commission that the Government and the unions had made such a deal. But the Commission stressed that it was not rubber stamping the arrangement between the government and the unions. Employers are so concerned about the decision, they say they will consider withdrawing from the Arbitration Commission. It's going to mean a significant increase in wage costs immediately. It will prejudice new investment plans and prejudice new employment opportunities, so the effects will be significant. The trial of the two French agents charged over the Rainbow Warrior affair began and ended in dramatic circumstances in Auckland today. Murder charges against the two, Major Alain Maffat and Captain Dominique Prieur, were dropped and they subsequently pleaded guilty to reduced charges of manslaughter. New Zealand Prime Minister David Lange denied there had been any political trade-off with the French government, but it does now appear the pair could simply be deported. When they arrived at court, Major Alain Maffat and Captain Dominique Prieur did so with the fanfare of sirens and the urgency of international terrorism, a specially modified wagon speeding them beyond the gaze of cameras. In a statement to the court, Solicitor General Mr Paul Naser QC said in replacing the murder charge, the Crown accepted that the evidence available and admissible would not establish that the accused were personally responsible for placing the two explosive devices on the Rainbow Warrior, nor that they intended killing anyone. The Crown's investigations, he said, do not establish the defendant's role in this affair as other than in support of those who actually placed the explosives. Pleading guilty to the charge of manslaughter, Mafar and Prieur are liable for up to 14 years in prison, as against life for murder. A French solicitor acting for the pair claims the reduction in charge makes it now possible they'll be deported. The law uh, makes it possible, yes. Mr Longy was told during this morning's cabinet meeting of the events in the Auckland High Court. At his lunchtime news conference, he rebutted suggestions that the French and New Zealand governments were in the process of making a deal for the release of the agents. This is a process of law, not some sordid haggling selling prisoners. Did you... That's not how the justice system works, you know. The Navy's Wessex helicopters have been grounded after a series of sabotage attempts. A naval police investigation began when foreign objects were found under the cowlings of three of the aircraft at HMAS Albatross near Nowra. Thursday, in a pre-flight inspection of one of the Navy's 16 Wessex helicopters revealed a small, unsecured fibreglass rod in an engine compartment. Friday, and in two other aircraft, objects were found lodged where the main tail controls are housed. One, a thin strip of alloy. The other, 
a small locking pin. Sought advice of people who, who know more about it than I do, but they say no, uh, that they wouldn't have affected the airworthiness, but it's still regarded as serious. Assuming that only personnel on the base could be responsible, naval police were called in to begin a detailed inquiry, but all machines took part in an exercise on Saturday without incident. Yesterday, though, one suffered total engine failure over Nara. It made a forced landing without injuries on board, but immediately all 16 helicopters were grounded. There's been only one other engine failure in the past 10 years. A three-year-old boy is recovering in an Adelaide hospital tonight after being discovered next to his mother's decomposing body in their flat. The dead woman was found by a neighbour this morning. Neighbours of the dead woman say she was last seen alive late Friday afternoon in the flats in Carey Street, Salisbury. It's believed the flat was checked by a neighbour after she became suspicious of the lights and television being on over the whole weekend. The woman's body was found in bed along with her three-year-old son. It appeared the woman had been dead for about two days. There was no sign of forced entry. The body was removed for an autopsy to determine cause of death. A report is being prepared for the coroner. The three-year-old boy was brought here to the Lyle McEwen Hospital at Elizabeth. Doctors say he's in a satisfactory condition, suffering nothing more serious than a bad nappy rash. Police will release no further details until the boy's father, who's believed to be living elsewhere, can be contacted. Well, all eyes turn to Flemington for the Million Dollar Melbourne Cup tomorrow. There'll be plenty of celebrating before and after the big race. And police today warned that they'd be mounting a blitz on drink drivers again this year. Tomorrow night on Day by Day, this little girl struggled to live. She's six and recently had a bone marrow transplant. She's living on borrowed time. By rights, she should be dead now. That's Day by Day tomorrow at 7 on 7. For five generations at McWilliams, one thing has never changed. The quality of our wines. Like our classic Riesling, well-rounded claret, famous Moselle, and now our shabbly and fruity Lexia. But McWilliams have made one concession to the 20th century. Our wines are also available in casks. So now McWilliams can please a cask of thousands. Now you can be short of sight or short of a bite. But you should never be short of runners. You can be short of a yard or short of a car. But you should never be short of runners. And you can grin when the situation's dim. Even if your pockets are empty. You're not short of a trick. Cause the colors and fit of ruggers will get you great. Ruggers by the Stubbies Clothing Company. A man should never be short of a pair. New Z-Bond press and seal products are here. Easy to use silicon and acrylic sealants that do away with all the effort and waste of using caulking guns. Just press for a watertight seal on the bathroom, press and seal your gutters and downpipes, and press and seal around timber and paintwork. Instant sealer at the touch of a finger. You can also press and strip for painting and renovating, press and clean for mirrors and glass, and press and start for the workshop. There's a press and seal product for all those pressing problem areas around your home. Z-Bond press and seal products from leading hardware stores and supermarkets. For too long, the computer stakes has been a one-horse race. But now Volvo, Kodak, Australia Post, Boeing and many others have found another runner, better suited to their conditions. Data General, also the only company to make a computer that is a true portable office. Now, there are two front runners in the computer stakes. We've proved that in many races, Data General is a generation ahead. Just ask Volvo, Kodak, Australia Post, Boeing, Westinghouse. If you're planning on going out to the Melbourne Cup to, tomorrow, be warned if you're celebrating before or after the big race because police say they'll be mounting a blitz on drink drivers again this year. Booze buses were first used at the Cup in 1983 when 75 people were charged with drink driving offences. Last year that number was down to 26 and police believe the buses have proved to be an effective deterrent to drink driving. But there are still some people who trust in luck not to get caught and with the rail strike, police are gearing up for a heavy day tomorrow. We have every available policeman uh, will be uh, uh, operating out of the booze buses. We're going to make sure too that the public are forewarned. Uh, we will have one right near the entrance to the course, so there's no excuse. They'll know that we're around and that we intend to uh, seek the drinking driver out. 
There will be five booze buses operating around Flemington tomorrow. And as the police say, you have been warned. Well, for those of you who are more interested in omens than form, you need look no further than the royal tour. Since the Prince and Princess of Wales arrived in Victoria eight days ago, any horse with a name that has royal connections seems to have been worth backing. Terry Clifton.